Next question is from Nate B. How do I increase compliance with my clients? Oh, yeah. This is a, you know what's funny? Mm. Of all the questions I get from trainers, don't learn from the government. Beat them. <laughs> yeah. This has to be one of the more common ones, it, you know, versions of this, right? Like, how do I get my clients to do, you know, what I tell them? How do I get my clients to eat better? How do I get my clients to show up more at the gym? Okay. So here's what I would have said to you 15 years ago. Here, what I would have said is, you have to inspire them. You have to motivate them. You have to, you know, really present the case really well. Get them to do what you want. Call them every day. Hey, buddy, you know who it is. We planned this. You were supposed to be here with me. Yeah, I'm right here. Come find me. And then I realized that that was a terrible strategy because although if you're good, and I was great. So I, one thing I'll say is I can sell an idea very, very well. This is something that I've always been able, able to do pretty well. So I could get my clients to buy in right away. And I was really good at this. But I would get them to buy in with inspiration, motivation. That would wane, either because they weren't working with me anymore or because it wanes, because that's just what happens. And then they would stop. And I realized this is a failing strategy. I can motivate them all day long. It's not going to last forever. My goal is to get this person to do things forever. So what I started to do was meet them where they were at mm -hmm. and I would inform them. I would support them and whatever they could commit to, I would do the best job of providing the best service and value. And then what would happen was magical. They would slowly improve their compliance on their own. Some people it would take a year or two, other people it would take a few months, but I had so much success by telling my clients, Here's what, okay, here's what'll get you where you want to go. Oh, you want to start there? That's no problem. We could do a lot with that. And then I would be that guy. I'd train them, support them. I'd be honest with them. Oh my God, why am I not losing weight? Well, it's because the diet part. I'd be honest with them, but I wouldn't force them. I wouldn't sit there and try and, you know, you know, inspire and motivate them and drive them to do what I wanted. And then little by little, they'd come to me and be like, hey, Sal, I want to do this thing with my nutrition. Hey, Sal, I'd like to show up to another workout. Or, hey, I've been doing this other exercise on my own. And little by little, these people magically did all the right stuff, took a little longer, but it stuck. It stuck forever. Well, isn't the difficulty in the beginning is that um, you're reliant a lot of times because of your business model of bringing them into the gym. And so it's like this urgency and this hustle to have them in front of you, have control. A lot of it is, is a control issue, I think, that a lot of can, like personal trainers have in terms of um, like, like even this word compliance, like it's, it's this assumption that, um, they're going to be doing all these things that you're telling them. And, and you're the, you're, you're the biggest, um, part of the, the, the piece in, in this entire puzzle of them moving forward. And, uh, it took me a long time to pull myself out of that entire equation, uh, and to do what you're talking, you're talking about in terms of like providing the right kind of information, uh, being available constantly, making sure they know that they can rely on me. But guess what? If you don't show up, it's completely on you. And I actually like flipped my business model on its head. So that way they were in that same understanding that uh, they know that I'm going to be there. I'm going to be professional. I'm going to take them through when they're ready, wherever they're at, um, you know, what they're willing to um, commit to. Uh, I'm definitely going to be there if they don't show up. You know, that's something they have to wrestle with themselves. This is their journey. This is this is entirely their process. I just want to keep reassuring them. I'm going to be here. I have the the tools for you uh, to get through this. You know, on the other side is basically you know be, instead of like being there casting um, uh, you know the the fishing rod for them. Like I'm teaching them how to fish and, and do this all themselves, and then removing myself. Way more successful. Yeah, oh, I'm going to pick you back off of what Sal said, but probably say it a little bit different. Um, than the meeting them where they're at type of deal is anytime you you learn something new whether it be a sport or a new habit or behavior it's like part of what makes people want to keep doing that is the experience that they have from it and normally if it's a positive experience that they have they're more likely to come back and do it again like if you go play a sport for the first time and you get your ass handed to you or you don't like it it's a miserable experience you fail at it you fail at it it's really tough to get up and want to do that again that's the same thing when it comes to working out. And so what I want to do is I want to create a ton of small wins. 
So it's kind of like the same thing that you're talking about. So, but when I set these goals, I'm going to set things that I know that they can get, they can accomplish. So we can just start adding up all these little wins. So to, to give them momentum and to encourage them to want to do more and comply to more things that I'm going to throw their way. If you lay something out and it's this super complex, hard, tons of workouts, tons of diet and calorie stuff to follow, like, and you give them all, there's a small percentage of people that, okay, they get that. And like maybe the engineer mind that really likes that. And they're like, okay, I got all the details. I know exactly what to do. That's not most people. Mm. Most people are not like that. They, most people look at that and go like, oh, it's like sitting down with a kid trying to teach them football for the first time. And you're teaching them all these defensive schemes, all these different stances, how to throw those, this, and how to do, and like, you're teaching them like 50 things at once. And you're like, oh my God, this is overwhelming. It's like literally give them one thing, one goal you're going to give them right now that you know is an, an easy win that they can accomplish either that day or the next day or within that first week, and then you build upon that. And what you'll see is if you can build that momentum, you'll see the compliance start to go up versus trying to throw everything at them at once. Uh, it's it's 100%. And when I pieced it together, I mean, I had a client once that I remember when she showed up, she was referred to me by one of my other clients that was a doctor. And she came in and literally, these were the first words out of her mouth. I introduced myself and she said, I don't like to work out. I'm here because Dr. So-and-so has told me numerous times I got to come see you. I'm only going to work with you once a week. I'm not going to do anything on my own and I'm, and I'm not changing my diet. Those were the first things out of her mouth when she met me. Old trainer style would have blown her out the door. Well, you're not going to do what I say. You're not serious, whatever. Instead, I said, no problem. There's a lot we could do with one day a week. Definitely more than what you're doing now, which is zero. And she looked at me like, really? I can only have to, I only have to come once a week? I said, yeah, absolutely. If you're not working out at all now with once a week, there's a lot of stuff that we can do together. Now, here's the key. Here's the, the interesting part about this story. After about two years or through the course of two years, this woman met with me two more days a week, started working out on her own, started working on her nutrition, became a certified personal trainer. This was over the course of two years because I met her where she was and I provided her a ton of value. It also reminds me of, I have a family member who was very talented at soccer when he was a kid, but his dad was a very high level soccer player in Italy. So when he was a kid, his dad was like super soccer coach. No, you gotta do it this way, you gotta do it that way. And he'd bring him to all these games and he just overbearing. Well, this family member of mine hated soccer because of it and quit when he was 12. Later on at the age of 30, he looks back and he goes, man, if my dad was cool about it, he goes, I would have been playing, so I would have gone to college and had a scholarship and I would have loved it. He goes, but he made it such a shitty experience <laughs> that I ended up quitting. Mm -hmm. Now he's a dad himself and he's different uh, with his kids. So think of it that way. By the way, the advice that we're giving to the coach right now works when you coach yourself. Okay, here's, this is the, the, the important part of this. When you're trying to coach yourself and get yourself to do this new thing, Okay, it's the same thing. Say to yourself, what is a small, challenging, yet realistic step that I can take right now or in a state of mind that is not motivated? I'm going to start there. Do that and then watch the natural progression happen from there. If you do everything all at once, your chances of long-term success are less than 10%. That's statistically true, so less than 10%. So whatever advice we're giving to this trainer right now, apply it to yourself for better uh, long-term odds of success. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.